All right, all right, guys. This is really amazing. You know what? You know what he's saying. You know what I'm saying right now. This is Show Football by Lazio Fellows, and right now this is Inside Radio, your number one online radio station. Delight your name. This is the best experience show, and you are now listening to your number one online radio station, Delight you need on inside radio this is a best experience show we talk about different pests pest control strategies effective control methods that needs to be done to get rid of different pests from your apartment strategies that involve procedures and many other things and we bring amazing guests like i used to see on the best experience show this show it cuts across different cities different country different states and different cities you know what i'm saying so right now we have gone into the ocean to bring amazing guests but these amazing guests were not just coming from anywhere but something drove them in but i'm going to share that in a couple of minutes you see i posted a particular video on my whatsapp status and this is really really amazing a lot of people saw the video and she shared it you know i'm going to share that video for you so you can just see it you can see this video here which i baited this particular place right and you can see the pest i mean these are german cockroaches feeding on it right they are feeding on this gel bait and this prompted a lot of reactions some comments extremely good nice video clear video really amazing stuff cascading effects really good procedures to get rid of cockroaches but what really drew my attention was the cascading effect. What happens with gel baiting? How can you get rid of gel, I mean, get rid of roaches in your apartment as an homeowner, as a facility manager, or even as a pest control operator? So right now we have two amazing guests in the show right now, right here on the Pest Experience Show. Number one is Mr. Suhas Kodam, all the way from India. And currently he is from Qatar. He is an amazing entomologist who has 20 years experience in this industry, both in structural pest management and urban pest management. An amazing, amazing man, talented man, an entomologist. Also, we have Mr. George Bedoya, my very good friend from the New York City, a pest control operator and a cockroach guru. I mean, when we talk about cockroaches, we talk about different roaches, German roaches especially, easy crusher, crushy, and so many other things that you can actually see. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Pest Experience Show. So we're live now. Uh, please just introduce yourself to our listeners right here. Okay. Yeah. You can just introduce yourself in. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, I said Suhas. I am from India. I am an entomologist in urban as well as uh, urban pest control as well as structural uh, pest I am dealing with for last 20 years. And I, I am actually dealing for last 20 years with all pests. You can say the cockroaches, rodents, flies, mosquitoes. The, the pest you can name it and uh, I deal with like it is the same. So. So today I am sharing my thoughts on the cockroach management, effective cockroach management and the integrated uh, management aspects for the cockroaches where I can sharing my uh, experience on, <coughs> on the cockroach monitoring, then you can say uh, gel baiting and the resistance management while we will be uh, going for cockroach management. Fantastic, so fantastic. Have some, we'll have some exciting uh, knowledge sharing today so that you will be at the next level of uh, the cockroach management today, for sure. Good. I mean, you literally don't want to miss out from every single thing. He's going to be talking about gel baiting, pesticide management, pesticide resistance management, and a lot of things, right? And also, Mr. George Bidoya. Yeah. Please can introduce, introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. This is Jorge Bedoya. Uh, I'm from New York. I'm a pest control operator and an operations manager. Uh, I'm an associated environmental scientist with 
a focus in German ma uh, roach management. So today, we'll, yeah. So today we'll talk about different things that people don't really talk about. We'll break out the standard of what's really pest management. Um, yeah. yeah. So keep it, keep it posted. Oh, great, 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 great. I mean, this is a show you don't want to miss out. So just get your pen, get your barrels, invite, share your link, share these links with your friends and let them join in right on Inside Radio. So the live chat is open, the comment sections is open. And if you're listening directly from the pest, from Inside Radio Direct, you can also stream from there. Or watch us directly from YouTube. All right, so this is the show you really want to be in. So without further ado, I would like uh, Mr. Suhas to talk more on when talk about resistance, pesticide resistance, and um, cockroach management generally. So just take us into every single thing that is really involved in cockroach management. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Shopu. Um, see, guys, basically for integrated pest management, uh, we need to always follow six important steps. That is, first one is you need to identify your pest. And second one, you need to monitor and the surveillance of the pest. Third one, on the basis of that, you should make some decisions how to manage this pest. And after that, to manage this pest, you need to have some factors to be uh, corrected, like the sanitations and, and the pest behavior simultaneously in this the awareness also plays a major role to uh, do the uh, effective management and after that this major uh, uh, aspect is come in picture is treatment and and this last but uh, important is post treatment monitoring and follow up these all steps are play important role while you are uh, managing any pest and especially in case of uh, cockroaches and today we are talking about the german cockroaches so i will be starting with the now we are dealing with uh, german cockroach so we have identified that we will be doing uh, pest management or the effective management of german cockroaches so the after that after identification it comes as a monitoring so i'll be giving you a little insights on the monitoring of the pest. Uh, and <clears throat> while monitoring, the one question should come in our mind, why we should monitor the pest actually? For after monitoring, uh, it is easy uh, for us to make a decision for the proper measures can be taken when the population is at low level. Then the second points we have to uh, we can gauge our success of control of program with the help of monitoring. And third one, the third major aspects, uh, uh, by better monitoring, you can judge before and after uh, success of the treatment, basically, the, or the program which you are implementing at any place or, say, any sector. So monitor, uh, monitoring is the important aspects of, uh, say, integrated pest management and so as for effective cockroach management. So for methods of monitoring, if you ask me, so there are two methods basically for cockroach monitoring. One is inspect and count visually, and second one is uh, uh, trapping. You need to use uh, some traps to monitor, which will be uh, integrated with uh, some baits, which is poison-free baits. And for uh, inspection and count visually, you need to have a, the, uh, the one effective flashlight and the mechanical uh, mechanic mirror, knowing where to look for cockroaches and pair of good eyes you should have. The sighted cockroaches are then visually counted and the number will be recorded and should be only attempted by experienced uh, pest control technicians. So. And so inspections plays a major role in effective pest manage, uh, cockroach management. I would say. So while trapping also we should have, a, we, we are generally using a two types of uh, traps, the live and second one is destructive trap. 
in live traps uh, allow the cockroaches to be released back into the population after counting if required especially when treatment strategy is being evaluated and uh, a live trap is like a jar trap it is and the second one is destructive trap that is sticky trap and we used to call and this as a cockroach monitoring trap so if you are preparing for jar trap you need to smear uh, inner inside wall of the surface with petroleum jelly or grasses uh, sorry grease so that the cockroaches which has been released into that cannot be escaped out of it and a small piece of white board a, a drop a few ml of uh, attractant onto the bread attractant like beer you can add onto the beer, uh, bread line the external wall surface with a piece of paper uh, socks or uh, to promote cockroach climbing actually but uh, important trap is a sticky trap which has been uh, in uh, Used for actual monitoring of uh, effect uh, of the cockroaches and effectiveness of the services also. So this is the best monitoring tool nowadays uh, available in the global market as the sticky traps, and people used to call this as a cockroach monitoring trap. So calculation of production of cockroaches uh, you can calculate it uh, if any PC was wanted to. Uh, calculate the reduction of population can be uh, the, the number of cockroaches trapped per trap at pre-treatment and the number of cockroaches which has been trapped uh, post-treatment which can give you a clear cut idea the reduction in uh, cockroach population with the help of this uh, monitoring traps and what information can we drive, uh, drive, derive from the traps beside a number of cockroaches the trapping results reveal the severity of infestation and the status of infestation when only and when only adults are caught it is the indication of a new infestation uh, while trap catches consist of both adults and nymphs indicates the established or the serious infestation if large number of nymphs are found uh, in the trap it is good to uh, it is a good indication that trap has been placed in a location near the harbor edges so the the position of the tra trap cockroaches also can give you a clear cut idea uh, uh, that the direction of the insects are moving from which can helpful for tracing the location of harbor edges so in that way the sticky traps guide us uh, for effective uh, monitoring and to manage the cockroaches we should have the knowledge of biology and behavior which i think my friend uh, bodaya will be taking through you and the correct control strategies and proper application techniques are plays a major role while uh, you are thinking of effective cockroach management and uh, while managing uh, the cockroaches the major aspects also plays a major role is the importance of sanitation basically cockroaches required food water and harborages to survive and we are the one who are providing all these things at our place or the working environment and the reduction of this factor will cause stress to the cockroach population and we can achieve uh, the uh, desired results so potential harborages if you want to check out it's a loose a baseboards which we are using while storing the materials even the cardboard boxes what we are using for storing the commodities in the stores and the cracks and crevices in any particular uh, <clears throat> premises uh, giving the congenial conditions for cockroach uh, bedding even simultaneously the food debris which is accumulated or the leaking taps and the, uh, the and the pipes give the ready food uh, water sources for cockroach survival and to get all these things in a line cleanliness must be maintained and all materials brought into any facility has to be screened and scanned by uh, before it taken into any premises that will uh, certainly prevent the cockroaches uh, get entered into any premises 
So that is an uh, important aspect. And if you, if you say so, that this, how the cockroaches are coming through our houses, so this is the major source through which the cockroaches are coming to our houses or say any commercial properties. So uh, I would like to share some facts about the sanitation. Improved sanitation may not necessarily result in a lower cockroach infestation, but the better, uh, I would say, better sanitation increase the insecticide performance. So the role of sanitations can be uh, negated uh, with uh, more bed uh, placements. Uh, that is gel gel beds basically. So if there are, there are issues of sanitis, sanitations then it can be negated with the more bed placement or uh, effective management. Uh, residual insecticides uh, are the most popular method people are using everywhere. And uh, how it works basically when cockroaches come into contact with the treated surfaces and receive a lethal concentration which results in knockdown uh, and followed by death. So there are uh, formulations which are currently people are using in global market, like some EC formulation uh, that is called as emulsifiable concentrate, and then vegetable powder, uh, suspended concentrate, soluble concentrates, like this kind of formulations people are using for property management. And the choice of formulations depends on the type of surface you are treating and the application equipment you are using, the presence of heat or moisture or the surrounding environment uh, plays a major role while choosing the formulations of the pesticides for cockroach management. <clears throat> so the, the cockroach baiting has started earlier in a... Uh, Year, year 1800 and now it's been started. So that time, if you say the history of cockroach baiting has started in year 1800 uh, with the sodium fluoride and people were using boric acids, then the carbamates, organophosphates. After that in 80s, the hydromethylon and the abamectin in 90s. Imidacloprid and piperonil also been released in 90s to 2000. Then the recently the people are using started using the molecule called as indoxacarb. So that is what the the, uh, the baiting of uh, gel baiting or cockroach baiting has been started in cockroach management. So while applying the gel bait, people should be more specific on the the, the grammage or the dot size what they will be applying. So, so, so optimum size would be the 0 0.03, <clears throat> uh, say uh, 0.4 gram, uh, the, 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 weight, the weight of the gel dots they will be applying for the cockroach management. Um, so now I am, I am giving you uh, uh, insights on how baits are working basically. So as uh, my friend Sofu has uh, put emphasis uh, on the word called as cascading effect. So how cockroach baits are working basically. So uh, the cockroach bait is you can say a maximum it is a, a combination of uh, food as well as the poison which would be at uh, minimum quantities so uh, cockroaches get attracted towards the gel beds they are taking into their digestive system and then then it starts working uh, affecting the cockroaches so what do you mean by uh, what do you understand for the cascading effect the cascading effect is that when the cockroach is being poisoned with the the active ingredient present in the bait they start uh, omitting or omit us. Uh, on that omittance, the other cockroaches also feed. And uh, some, some, some cockroaches also feed on the dead cockroaches, which has been because of the bed poisoning. And some cockroaches also feeding on the feces of this, uh, the poisoned cockroaches. So poison get horizontally transfer uh, from 
से फर्स्ट लेवल और सेकंड लेवल और टर्शरी लेवल आल्सो तो फ्रॉम प्राइमरी डोनर टू प्राइमरी रेसिपिएंट्स इट विल हैव इट इज गेट ट्रांसफर देन प्राइमरी रेसिपिएंट्स इज बिकम अ सेकेंडरी डोनर काइंड ऑफ थिंग so the horizontal transfer of poison takes place from one cockroach to the other cockroach or maybe transfer into uh, next generation of the cockroaches so that is called as cascading uh, effect so transfer of uh, in active ingredient or you can say transfer of insecticide from uh, one cockroach generation to another generation is called as uh, cascading effect so that's why the gel beds are working effectively and for longer period because of uh, this is their mode of action <coughs> the this uh, that means they can share the insecticide with the difficult to reach stages like including nymphs and gravid female and then the the remain in this uh, uh, and, and which are remain in the safety of cracks and crevices so uh, if you say the advantage of uh, gel bedding is that the the gel beds actually taken care taking care of the hidden population of the cockroaches uh, where in case of uh, insecticide spray you can say the visible populations can get killed with the help of residual spray so advantages of a uh, baiting or residual spray uh, i would like to get into this can be carried uh, say gel baiting can be carried out during say, day hours or your normal operational hours or you can say in the kitchen uh, operating hours if you are cooking or some if you are having food also this 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 activity can be carried out even the gel beds are suitable for the sensitive environments and uh, it minimizing the insecticide exposure in human environment and target specific long lasting and this treatment can last up to 2 to 3 months and the most important part uh, the gel beds can help you to manage the insecticide resistance in cockroaches so this is these are the advantages of gel bedding uh, over the residual spray so one might know this and nowadays the challenge to cockroach management challenges to cockroach management is uh, the insecticide resistance so heavy reliance and frequent use of uh, residual insecticide have led to develop of uh, insecticide resistance in german cockroaches and also uh, they have inherited ability to withstand the concentration of insecticide that would be lethal to a normal population so and that is only been happen in case of german cockroaches so the development of resistance is a, a, a common uh, things has become in case of uh, the insect residual insecticides in cockroach manage uh, in cockroach management era now <clears throat> and many countries in asia as now this the japan korea then uh, even muslim malaysia uh, singapore where people have reported a, a resistance in resistance of german cockroaches against many insecticide so now uh, i would like to uh, uh take you through some recent issues with are happening in cockroach uh, beds early 90s say some of the stains of uh, strains of german cockroaches in usa avoiding cockroach beds due to glucose aversion in other words uh, i would say uh, cockroaches avoid to feed on the bed because they are avoid to the glucose which is uh, an important attractant in uh, the cockroach beds the problem was solved by uh, this by the changing the sugar attractant in bed to other sugar compound nowadays however more recently in year 2004 2004 uh, 2005 uh, some stains of german cockroaches are avoiding 
many major sugar attractants such as glucose and then the fructose sucrose and maltose so where here the cockroaches are stop uh, feeding uh, showing aversions against this uh, you know gel beds but currently this uh, many leading companies uh, like uh, or say uh, r and d oriented companies like bayer these are this is called nowadays uh, the nu it is and the company like dupont have come up with a new bet uh, mattresses that are acceptable and attractive to the bet averse cockroaches so far the incidences of bet aversions are only limited to usa and the asian countries like south korea and 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 some part of india also the bet aversions nowadays been uh, noticed and studied mm, so uh, there are say, there are four types of resistance you can find for any pesticides amongst the insects the first one is uh, metabolic resistance where the resist uh, insects uh, detoxify or remove the toxic faster than the susceptible insects that is called as metabolic resistance the second one is called as target site resistance the site where the toxin uh, attacks become modified to overcome the insecticide's effect making the insecticide uh, no longer able to bind on the particular site where it has been applied so that is called as target site uh, resistance third uh, resistance you can say a reduced penet penetration the insects outer cuticle the outer body cover uh, developed in a such a stronger way on a thick uh, which can slow the absorption and the penetration of the chemical into uh, the insect's body so that will uh, where this uh, that insecticide uh, turn into ineffectiveness that is called as a reduced penetration the insecticide won't be able to uh, penetrate through the outer covering of the insects third you can uh, the fourth one is the behavioral resistance this this is actually mainly related to the uh, like i said earlier this aversions or avoidance the modification in insect behavior that uh, help them to avoid the lethal effects of uh, the insecticides so that is actually called as avoidance or the aversions against the <clears throat> an insecticide and that's called as uh, behavioral resistance so if you wanted to manage the resistance we should develop some strategies so uh, and to conserve the susceptible genes in the population by reducing the selective pressure so to The, we need to build a strategies for resistance management is uh, uh, insecticide uh, rotation then we should uh, use the insecticides in mixtures like there are uh, formulations available with uh, double active and triple active active ingredients present in the insecticide and third and important aspect is the non chemical alternatives that my friend uh, budaya is also going to give you his insights on that so if three aspects we need to uh, very stringently apply this uh, insecticide rotation insecticide mixtures like say double active triple active formulations available in the market and the third aspect is non chemical alternatives which is uh, important aspects so insecticide rotations can be done like this the use of insecticides in sequence or you can say uh, uh, the generational basis you can use and the rotate the active ingredients and the formulations uh, while uh, you are using for a cockroach residual spray and uh, there are three points uh, you can always consider there will be a three kind of products uh, you can see in the market that is many different brand names actually contains the same active ingredients the second point is the different chemicals 
may be in the same class of insecticides you will find and best to know and third one is we should know the mode of action of the chemical what you are using in order to prevent a cross resistance so this three uh, the products three kind of products you will find and you need to more uh, careful while using the, the residual spray for this thing so insecticide rotation and mode of action you will find there is uh, one classified mode of actions based on their site of action if an insect pest population develops a resistance to one insecticide from a mode of action class there will be a good chance that they will be resistance to the member of that particular mode of action class so that also we need to consider if suppose synthetic pyrethroids uh, one class has developed the resistance there can be a chance this the another molecule in the same category can uh, you will feel you can we will find the wow resistance develop even in case of uh, the gel baiting also uh, you can have a rotation of molecules like you are using <coughs> uh, say pipronil or the imidacloprid or indexocarp or hydramethylene gel so you should have this uh, so, uh, rotation of the gel beds uh, molecule wise so that the sustainable population management and the resistance prevention prevention can be uh, done so for this you need to follow the irac uh, guidelines for mode of action of the insecticides <coughs> and wow, so it's really important sorry it's yeah. really important. i mean yeah. you made mention of points you made mention of points um, right now and i want to lay more emphasis on that particular point and you said that um, gel baiting, if you are gel baiting, you need to rotate it, right? And um, most of these roaches, they gain resistance to different yeah. class of pyrethroids, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's a whole lot, you know? So as a pest control operator, I mean, what's your advice to pest control operators? You know, based on your own experience, what's your advice before... Uh, Mr. George Bedoya, as a field work technician, uh, give us the sanitation aspect and um, procedures. You know, you mentioned some of the points that sanitation is not only just for the treatment of the roaches. Sanitation will not kill correct. the roaches, right? Correct, correct. According to what you said, but will improve so sustainable... the pesticides. Yeah. So, improve this pesticide uh, application some... process. Yeah, so entire summary Fantastic. of what I explained Fantastic. now, the sustainable cockroach management and resistance prevention. So you should incorporate with the rotation strategies, like I said, this based on the mode of action of the insecticide, you should keep on rotating the insecticides uh, for cockroach management. And the, the same sh product should not be used for, say, more than three months to prevent uh, insect become resistance to that particular active ingredient. So, so important you have to, you should not use the same product for more than three months so that uh, the, the chances of resistance can be uh, eliminated. Also, you can, uh, you could involve the rotation between bit formulation of different ad, uh, ingredients and the mode of actions. And, and and uh, the last aspect is that there is one guidelines for the IRAC mode of action classification, which can give you exact idea the what is the mode of actions for particular molecule what you are using for cockroach ma management. So that you need to refer this uh, IRAC insecticide resistance uh, uh, <coughs> rotation uh, guidelines. So which, will, which can be a, a comprehensive classification of uh, all commercially available insecticide, allowing the products with the same uh, mode of action to be uh, readily identified in that guide. So you can you can refer the their website that is uh, irsconline.org, where you will have uh, the guidelines for uh, insecticide mode of action. Readily, you can readily identify the mode of action of various insecticides. Really? 
Please, I will get the link from you personally so I can share with my community. All right. Yeah, yeah. My, and, yeah. Um, so thank you very, very much. I mean, you've dealt a lot, talked about gel baiting, resistance management, and also best advice for pest control operators. But there is still something that is missing, and that has to do with proper sanitation and field work as a technician. You know, in terms of getting rid of cockroaches, right? Um, there's something yeah. that has to do with communicating with the client as a pest control operator, as a service business owner, or you know, as even as a homeowner, there are some guidelines that need to be well understood. And that is why that's why we have Mr. George Bedoya all the way from the New York City to give us and to explain what exactly is really involved in this thing that we call cockroach management but right now we're looking at the effective cockroach management so mr george okay you hear me now yes loud and clear i disagree with what was said previously i don't think in roach management um that those statements are necessary uh and i will i will give my arguments on that so yes sanitation is very important but it only can determine how many roaches can there be in one place you know what i mean when when we are talking about uh population dynamics it only tells you you can have this amount of roaches and if you do sanitation then that that capacity can be reduced but you still have roaches and that's not a reason why you're having roaches um yes it can improve pesticide applications and the life of an insecticide actively but it's not that significant in my in my case with my own research um i can get rid of an infestation even if i have zero cooperation from my client without bothering him um insecticidal rotation is not necessary either every three months keep in mind we we must find if the population is really resistant to the bait for example or to the active ingredient now how can you tell that the resistant is um, metabolic resistance or is behavioral resistance well, you have to identify what you are using and if that's contributing to the whole equation. I'm going to give you an example, right? You there? I'm with you. Okay, okay. I'm going to give you an example. And, that's, and this is where a lot of people tend to blame products. Let's say somebody call you into one house, right? And they have a large roach infestation, right? What is the first thing a normal pest control operator will do if we are generalizing? They will think, well, we have to reduce the population substantially and fast, right? Yeah, that is what the expectation is for the, any client. Exactly. So people will use something like um, a multifile concentrate or a suspended concentration uh, with a pyrethrate, right? They will use, I don't know, deltametrine or pyrethrines or anything that will shock the population down to have a good client's expectation, right? But we are not considering that the area that we are treating is getting contaminated completely. 
not con in a way that the whole area will be avoided by the roaches if they get to survive. Uh, a common procedure that was placed before in, for example, New York, as, as far as I was seeing, was that you will spray today and then in a couple of weeks you will go and put bait. Right? Yeah, that is the process people are following. But uh, I am also not opinion of that. Only the spray will give you a good result in a short span. No, Even no, no. The... But, but, but hear me out. The spray is spraying a repellent like a pyrethroid cancels out the gel bait. Not because the gel is bad, but because the roach will not approach to the gel bait because they are having behavioral resistance to the pyrethroid deposits. Yeah, that is that is possible unless and until you have not analyzed it, you cannot say that because of the behavioral habits. See, sometimes if you are applying a chemical while you apply a gel, in that case, the, the gel itself get contaminated because of. No, no, but, uh, but the, even the, even if even if, so think about this, if you are using a suspended concentration, a suspended concentration, if properly used, can last about ninety days, right? Yeah, right, right. So it's it's ninety days which is also being detectable even more than 90 days. And the reason why it's because the roaches are not being repelled because of the lethal effects, but the sub lethal effects, as long as the roaches can detect the areas where you sprayed, they will avoid it. So it doesn't matter how much gel bait you put in the area, they will not eat it. And it's not the gel bait's fault. You can rotate all you want, but they will not approach to the area. They will move to somewhere uh, safe. German roaches are very complex in which they are very sensitive, sensible um, insects. They get stressed and they will prioritize their well-being over food, or water in a normal situation when we get to one apartment yes they will be in the kitchen and bathroom but if a pesticide application done by either the client or a, another professional was done we cannot expect success with the treatments we are doing um, so it's not about rotation. You, you can, again, you can rotate all the chemicals you want and you can apply all the things you want to do. But if you are not taking into consideration behavioral resistance, uh, you will fail or you will have to do multiple pesticide applications and maybe you will be lucky. Uh, this is, uh, see, my opinion is that if you uh, see earlier what happened in earlier era, say you can say 10 to 15 years back, people were having uh, a few molecules in their back for cockroach management. Now people are having the many molecules which has been developed. So being uh, that uh, traditional or orthodox uh, method people were using for many years and they are mostly rely on the single molecules to get the result so that is the scene i don't know what is there in usa but in other part of the world the people are relying on mostly on the single molecule they are using year after year so no, the, the, you know, it's, not, the, it's not he, about he the, the point he may, uh, mr george made mention of the point which I actually got clearly so he made mention of using repeller repellent insecticides yes. right after and um coming maybe like a week then you will not beat those things will cause bit shyness right they won't feed on it 
But in the case where you are using non-repellent insecticide, people like imidacloprid, yeah. right? Yeah. In that case, the wound you can even bait, right? There's something they call point on process, you know, just um, paint on, you know, maybe like the imidacloprid, you just paint it on the surface, right? It won't repel them. But if you're using something like lambda cyclotrin or maybe the train train that I'm train, it will definitely repel them away. That's the point he's actually making, right? Yes. And I think yes. I agree with him, you know. But in case where you are using non repellent, you can also beat. I don't know if that's correct. You can also beat. Yes. Even 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 the even the uh, formulations which you are using, it depends on the if, uh, the effectiveness on which surface you you are applying them. Fantastic. That's exactly what so, Mr. Sumas according to you should be more Leon. specific on more specific on the, the type of uh, surfaces you are treating. If you are uh, treating the porous surfaces with uh, your acidic formulation, it is not going to be worked. So there you should hey. have a WP formulation. So you should be you should be mm -hmm. more uh, more choosy about depending upon the which kind of surface you are formulation. treating. Yeah, so yeah, but it, usually, it usually in, in multi, for example, my specialty is multifamily housing, and uh, not commercial okay. kitchens. And yeah. what I found is that it, well, I, I, I do work with emulsional concentrates and suspended concentrations, and I haven't had any issues there because of the surfaces, and yeah. the, mm -hmm. the amount of of pesticides that I apply gets reduced significantly. Even even so, that in the following visits, I don't have to apply any chemicals, and I don't have to wow. rotate. And the reason you why the, the reason why you don't have to rotate is the following. Okay. When I do pest management, I use insect growth regulators but not the ones mm -hmm. that you are used to. I use juvenoids. So the way that resistance works is that you have a gene pool, right? Let's say you have a population in your, in your, in a kitchen. If I get to stop the reproduction, the passing from the tolerant genes from one roach to another generation gets stopped. So you, you have to keep in mind that there are two differences. You have a resistant population and you have a tolerant individual, right? Hmm. Hmm. When that's, I That's a very good point. When I spray, for example, I wipe down a population to a point that if anything gets to survive, will be a few tolerant individuals. Mm -hmm. If I don't do nothing else, and I just wait, in the following days, those tolerant individuals will reproduce and will make up a resistant population. See, you are you are de you are dealing with basically a residence population, this residential yeah, population yeah. of German roaches. But if you if you see the amount of population and the amount of uh, the pressure in commercial account is very very high as compared to uh, the residential uh, customers. Basically. If you consider any single restaurants or the QCR where the amount of population of uh, German roaches are very 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 high i would say as compared to the residential population. and the second thing is that as you are mentioning that if you are applying this any uh, sc formulation or anything it will last there for uh, 90 days is absolutely correct but in case of uh, the, the commercial uh, like a, a restaurant or the kitchen commercial kitchens where the pressure of removing removing the active ingredient present on the surfaces with the help of their washing practices or say the cleaning practices they are actually uh, <coughs> wiping out the all active ingredient present on the surfaces or say on a daily basis 
so that's why the effect of the chemical which is applied on the surfaces is uh, very less no no so i know in, i know but but in this yeah. in this case we have to come yeah, yeah. in this yeah, case so. we're coming into integrated pest management if we are yeah, that's if we are that's, that's yeah, that's and, 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 yeah and, and amount of pressure is also there that the people want a instant result in that case people mostly relying on the knockdown effect of the chemicals but they, instead of going for instead of going for uh, say sc formulation yeah. people are more preferring the ec formulations to get the knockdown of uh, the pest which has been present over there and but <clears throat> being being a used to such uh, practices people are using frequently such chemicals and they are not rotating the other molecules with this so the the development of resistance is you more don't have to rotate. let me let me tell you why you don't have to rotate yeah yeah if okay, it, you can go ahead. It, it should it should be if it you should be rotated use... no but you you don't really have to rotate every three months though hear me out why if okay, so if you're if you're how often how often how often well, do you, you have to, you have make, to make, or do a treatment you have to make an analysis based on no, no. based on your that's studies. true that's true that's true you are see this is there is no thumb rule as such for but it has been an average period which has been given by some of the scientists we have which we have analyzed this period for rotation to management of residences yeah, minimum, minimum three months it is it is minimum three months, but it can it can be it can be modified according to the 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 situation which has been prevailing in any premises so minimum three months you can rotate the uh, rotate the different molecule depending upon the mode of actions basically mode of no, actions is not it's not even that you don't have to rotate rotation means that over a period of three months you haven't been able to deal with a single population and if you're relying only in pesticides to deal with a single population you are not doing integrated pest management yeah see i am i am basically against of use of uh, say uh, the pesticides basically uh, the insecticides I, mm -hmm. i i would prefer mostly to control the cockroaches with the gel baiting it's it's only no, but, but, but even, even if even if you do gel baiting if if the if there was a pesticide application applied priorly that gel bait will not be consumed or if people are trying to do the knockdowns okay. like by retrains if you are trying I think, to i think i try to like understand what he's saying uh mr george is trying to say that if for example uh maybe like an operator a different service uh pest control operator visit an apartment and spread probably not you don't know probably you don't know the person just sprayed uh, a repellent pesticide and you just go there and bait then the problem is not going to be solved i think it's that's the point be, he's trying to make it's not gonna it's not right? gonna be solved um and, it, and it's not about rotation you have to okay. avoid you have to keep this in mind roaches can be stressed and that stress will change their whole behavior that is what i mentioned no if you if you if you deny them a shelter of the food and the water if you no 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 not, on, not only that it, you can you can stress the roaches by oh. doing pesticide applications not only by you but early your customer before they call a pest control operator which is costly they will try to mitigate the situation by themselves applying pesticides and there is something that is called a uh, tolerance threshold once they contaminated the whole thing and they saw what's the real situation is when they say you know what it's now time for an investment and call the pest control operator but if the pest control <laughs> 
<laughs> but if the pest control operator goes and the whole yeah. thing is already contaminated by household products, then you are minimizing the effects of your products. And, mm. and you're going to say, well, they are not eating this bait because maybe they are averse to the bait or because they are not eating uh, or they are not dying with the active ingredient. I have to rotate the, the gel. And it's not that. See, yeah. I, I am telling you my experience on that part. See, in that case, you there the, the education plays a major role. You should create That's awareness about the, awareness I mean, about the cockroach management uh, or the, the pesticides, what you are using, or the, your strategies, or the basic facts about the cockroaches and the molecule you are going to use. So mm -hmm. once you are doing a uh, uh, pest control, you, you are giving giving contract to the PCO. So then the customer has should not interfere any of the activity what the PCO is carry, carrying out. No, no, but even even before, even before, before I think we, that's like a midpoint before before. Yeah, even, even before we get there, we must think that we. I mean, we must really understand that if our customer is calling us it's because it's their last resource they don't want to spend no money you know so what mm. what they're going to do you have to ask have you used any insecticides here and if so what some people can lie to you yes some people can lie to you and say no i haven't used nothing but if you know how to investigate the situation, you will see if the roaches are stressed or they are not stressed based on their profiles. Mm. If you start to see a lot of early nymphs and it's 12, um, 12 midday, what does that tell you? Mm. Hi, they don't, have, they, no, they don't have to come out looking for food because they already have the feces in the aggregation zones, right? So why are they out? They are not looking for your client's food, that's for sure. So is there something wrong with them? Why are they what they don't they don't have to come out and they don't want to come out, but they are being stressed. Why are they being stressed? And if and if they are being stressed since how how long were they being stressed in that apartment or in that commercial kitchen where are they redistributing themselves because now they are not gonna be in the kitchen and the bathroom only they're gonna be in the living room or they're gonna be in the offices or they're gonna be in the dining area they're gonna be in the ceiling because food and water came to a second place and their security comes first. That's why mm. you start to see roaches uh, behind picture frames or you start to see roaches mm. in bedrooms, even if the person is very clear, very clean. Um, so you must keep into consideration stress in roaches before mm. doing a pesticide application. Yeah, yeah, but for that matter, you need to have that communication. What they are, the, the control measures which has been followed earlier uh, by themselves. Like there are some do-it-yourself products available in the market. Those people are preferring those products to be used first. And when the situation goes beyond their hands, they used to call the pest control operator. So in that case, we we need to have and uh, the basic idea what they have followed earlier or what is this or whosoever done the services earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, what I do is I, is I do a lot. I do a local research of what my clients can be using, right? I, I, every product that's a household product, I already have investigated them. If they are, what kind of chemicals they are, which group they are, um, how quick do they act? How quick do they last? Mm. How long? I'm sorry. How long do they last? Uh, and those are points to have into consideration. Some of them say 
that they can last up to three months, and I believe them. They can do last up to mm. three months, not necessarily killing roaches, but being active in the area. Like the foggers, the wow. foggers are the worst enemy that a PCO can have. Mm. Did you know for that? that I used to do a cone biopsy for testing the uh, active ingredient. You must be aware about this. What do you mean by cone biopsy? Where the surfaces has been treated and the cockroach is on the is. surface uh, to have the efficacy uh, tested for particular active ingredient. So mm. the people are using as a cone biopsy to the judge the efficacy of any of the cockroach has been uh, released on the uh, treated surfaces. Uh, uh, for say period of uh, one hour, then they will be collected again and put it in the jar for uh, to analyze the knockdown as well as the mortality after 24 hours or in say, uh, but that, uh, so that, two days, but three days, seven days, or till they can uh, you you achieve a hundred percent result out of it. So so that is, that is the scientific evaluation of any active gradient a persistency of uh, the molecule on the particular surfaces can be tested through the cone by C. So that is the approach I used to follow uh, to have the judgment of particular active ingredient or the particular formation uh, formulation which has been last on a particular surface. That can be an idea. And in, in, in case of a live example, that would be the different scenario, how people are uh, uh, clear, following the cleaning practices in their houses. If, if, if you say there are the oil which has been deposited on the surfaces of uh, uh, any uh, residential uh, customers, in that case, the residue which has been uh, applied on that particular surface is not going to affect you for sure. So this kind of uh, uh, inspection should happen in, at any particular premises while you're going for the insecticidal uh, effectiveness you're judging about. In standard condition, what you are saying is correct. But yeah, in case of, uh, it, it will it will it will vary. Uh, say uh, every house, every house you're going to treat, it will the scenes will be different one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the strains, different strains. Fantastic, fantastic. I mean, I literally have gotten a lot of points, and my books and my pens are really, really filled up. And I really want to um, really apologize because this session should have ended about uh, two minutes ago because the show was for seven to eight p.m. Okay. But um, the, the session has really been amazing and highly educative so far and um and um i really really want to say that a lot of people are learning from this so that's why i do want to even cut this whole discussion off you know so it's really really amazing i mean i think uh, mr george bidoya has spoken well in terms of the customer perspective because they would want they don't want to spend money to be honest because i mean personally as a pest control operator um most of these people, they don't want to spend money until the problem has escalated to the point that they have to just get a pest control operator to deal with that problem. And in that case, they'll have gotten different do-it-yourself pesticides and insecticides and all those kind of things. You know, some of them can even get dust powders everywhere and just, you know, I just want to get rid of these jammer roaches. I don't get rid of these roaches from my apartment, you know. But as a pest control operator, it affects what we do. And according to Mr. Suas, he may mention the point of education, which is the main reason why we have Insights Radio generally. You know, Insight Radio is dedicated to providing the adequate information, both to homeowners, both to pest control operators. I mean, this is an opportunity for pest control operators to be able to learn and unlearn and also relearn what needs to be done on the field. You know, right now we have different people from different countries, from different states, from different cities, from different sectors to talk about these things and how to get rid of them. This is a program that would look forward to. I mean, we don't just say, okay, we just want like focus in a particular city or a particular state or a particular country. 
you know now mr bidoya is from new york city we brought in guests from california india no he he got frozen <laughs> yeah that's all right. right mr sukas it was a pleasure to meet you yeah yeah same year <laughs> So you have good insight as you've been worked in the residential sector. So I I, I appreciate that you are, uh, you are keen on such kind of observations and the findings in terms of applications of pesticides and. No, I, well, one one thing that, that I that I do try to to teach uh, pest control operators is that roaches, don't, there is no standard for roach behavior. They yeah, yeah. Will, they so will every yeah. Mm -hmm. There are behavioral changes are happening. So uh, no, but the, and but they are they yes. are most primitive insects present on the earth. So they have a more uh, adaptable creature on the earth. I would say rather than human. Yeah. So they their will. behavioral it's been. Uh, uh, Unidentified, I, I would say it's we have reached up to say 10 percent or 20 percent uh, explore uh, exploration of their behavior. Yeah, so there are many aspects we need to uh, uh, learn about them, and then uh, then thus we can actually recommend the, the behavioral changes of the of this. Yeah, and um, and. Um we always must keep in mind that they do react to the environment not only where they are but to the environment where they uh, where they are staying every interaction that we have with the roaches has a cause even if they don't get repelled they get somehow they get stressed or there is a consequence on the surviving of the chemicals yeah yeah they are modifying they are modifying their behaviors no? so that is what it is Behavior means what? Sometimes, if you are spraying some uh, the older producing insecticide, they themselves close their spiracles for say, many hours also. One or two hours also, they can close their spiracles and they can stay on their places uh, for even you. Uh, you will feel that that cockroach has been died because of uh, the insecticide that has been applied, but. They, but in reality, they are avoiding by closing their spiracles to get penetrated into their uh, body, and that is what the gift the cockroaches are having. So yeah, it's yeah. it's been a deep, deep, deep uh, understanding needs to actual understand the cockroaches behavior. Yeah, there is there is really not there is really not a um, um, what was. You know there is no magic bullet for the roaches. Um, yes, correct. But at least we can control. If we have all the factors, we can control how long or how chronic an infestation will be. Yeah, and as you rightly mentioned, that there should be a economic threshold level or the acceptable. I don't hear anything.
Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank thanks, you, boss. boss. Yeah. Thanks, Shopu. Thanks, Budaya, uh, to be here. So we'll be in touch with uh, <laughs> touch with and share our thoughts. Whenever we'll have something new to be shared or be interesting to be shared. Definitely, boss. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you.